I probably just quick uh, introduce myself and my team without uh, the slide to save a little bit of time. Uh, Hua Zhong from Nordian Trinity University and uh, Associate mm -hmm. Professor. So th thank you for joining and the chair already introduced the topic of our presentation. Uh, it's basically uh, how to use the digital technology uh, for climate response design of the build environment sector. That's basically link with uh, our background. Uh, myself is an associate professor in Northern Trinity University. I'm also the fellow and the charter engineer for SIPS, a chartered institute of building services engineering. So we three all from a building engineering services background. Uh, give you a little bit of introduction about what's a building services engineering, if you don't know the detail. We basically fundamentally based on the building physics and the architecture science to design build environment. The build environment is not just an indoor environment, but also an outdoor environment. So any environment not naturally built by, is built by us, so it's a build environment. Uh, uh, for the outdoor design, actually, we, uh, we need concern like acoustic uh, air pollution, uh, then think about the uh, outdoor facility infrastructure design. And for indoor design, uh, as you know, the heating, ventilation, air conditioning, the lighting, acoustic system uh, in place in the building or uh, our subject area. Uh, but the main purpose is there uh, how to uh, design the building environment system uh, more better to uh, make a thermal comfortable indoor and outdoor environment for human being. And also in particular, as you know, majority of the person during the whole life will stay in the build environment 90% of the time. So make the build environment more comfortable, which is very important for human being. Uh, that's a traditional building engineering services subject ever. But currently the whole sector under pressure based on this uh, three high level target and the uh, and the document so all of that system i mentioned before no matter is heating ventilation acoustic uh, and uh, also control the air pollution uh, indoor and outdoor it all consume energy all of the engineering mechanical system all consume energy traditionally we just uh, ignore that just use uh, as much as uh, we can the energy to make a comfortable environment but now we under these three, uh, three high level document and the target pressure, we need to achieve zero carbon by 2040 or 2050, depends which sector. And we need to control our temperature uh, increasing by 1.5 degrees C. Otherwise, uh, the climate, uh, uh, global warming is a huge problem. And also, this very good uh, framework of, uh, from the United Nations about the sustainability goals, our sector should have. Uh, the whole industry will achieve that. Uh, eventually, concerned the building environment sector uh, uh, have a forty percentage cover forty percentage of the energy consumption and the along around thirty five thirty six percentage of the carbon emission. So, without uh, building environment, uh, industrial people uh, uh, contribute, we cannot achieve these uh, three goals. Uh, so, today we will introduce a. Uh, what means uh, climate response design in the building environment sector, in particular link the macro environment with the macro environment uh, to design better building, save energy, but same time still make uh, the environment comfortable for human beings. And also because uh, uh, I invited by this uh, uh, network and also I'm an expert of the network, the funding from here, we will particular focus on the innovative uh, technology, digital technology, how to help us to achieve this kind of uh, objective is uh, think about the climate uh, response design. So the main technology we will cover today based on, on some uh, detailed research project, my research RA will uh, discuss about that later on in detail, including uh, CFD, uh, the computer flow dynamic simulation, building very specific building energy simulation. We have uh, energy plus uh, based uh, uh, different uh, apps uh, software and how it, we can design digital twin to control the building environment and talk with uh, uh, other uh, system uh, and also uh, 
currently we have a, a lot of further development from machine learning so how to based on the real-time sensor monitoring uh, linked with the computer vision then you from the uh, the, the uh, machine learning model to uh, predict energy consumption then we can even better control the the, the building energy uh, consumption uh, so that's a little bit of uh, general things why it's important for uh, climate response design uh, which is uh, quickly uh, listed here. Uh, yeah, that's a high level things. Uh, build the environment are always a part of the sustainable goal and to help us achieve these uh, uh, 17 goals. Uh, another thing I mentioned, I'm a Tatra engineer, uh, engineer of the building engineering services. Uh, our research actually have a good, very good impact uh, to inform the design uh, to uh, contribute to the building regulation. Uh, SIPS uh, Tata Institute also uh, uh, issue a lot of uh, uh, guidance, high level guidance or detailed technical uh, specification recently. This one uh, just uh, um, updated to uh, 2020. After 20 years, the last version we issued is 2000, uh, 2000 uh, uh, and the, after 20 years, uh, we re-update that. And I like this flower to give you the sense of because I know a lot of you from a natural environment background. So how our build environment mm -hmm. can help You see the core part that I mentioned before, all of the building engineering services is traditionally only focused on how to use the energy, build a system, uh, we call the operational energy for the building environment to make a better, more comfortable performance. But now we need to consider consider all of these factors. Uh, think about the human being, uh, human being uh, health and well-being, and also think about the pollution. Think about the, as I mentioned before, before adapting the climate change, and also even beyond uh, cross disciplinary with uh, other sectors. Uh, especially for when you guys for the natural environment or works. Uh, uh, biodiversity, ecology, and transport, and so on. So that's uh, all of the factors we, we should concern now for design building environment. Okay, uh, some project, uh, I will give you more detailed information based on very recent project, uh, particular introduce some uh, uh, key uh, digital technology we need to make the building more sustainable and low carbon. So I hand over to my RA how to introduce this uh, project, and then Sean Yu will introduce uh, uh, the machine learning part. So there are so many like uh, available like climate simulation tools. So um, the most popular one is uh, every mat. So uh, it can like simulate the, the microclimate around us, like the vegetation. So, but the problem for that is uh, um, it cannot simulate the indoor aerial situation. So uh, very accurate. So we use uh, CFD, which is a very powerful digital technology to the indoor and outdoor at the same time. So it can like give us uh, um, the temperature distributed and like the airflow movements um, from the CFD. So, um, and also like, we all know that if there is a very small chance, it will occur a very big difference in CFD. So for the, so for the, so we use uh, like the courtyard as an like example. So for the courtyard, which is a very um, famous, like the microclimate regulator. So. Um, and before our test, before, um, so we did the validation for the courtyard based on our like um, internal experiment. And also like we, um, we validate from other like internal papers um, to ensure our simulations um, accuracy. So, and, and also like for the, um, for the we, we arrange like four trees inside the courtyard to see the influence of the, um, vegetation, um, the temp the aerosomal conditions to the indoor aero. Like the, we have two scenarios. The first one is uh, the four trees are all height of uh, two meter, and another scenario is the trees are one point five meter. So we want to see that what is the difference um, between the height of tree impact to the indoor aero, whatever the like the um, airflow movement or the or the temperature. And also like we have like uh, another case which is very interesting. It's like we arrange like 
nine, um, nine water sprayer inside the cocktail to see the evaporative, evaporative cooling system um, influence the uh, indoor air roll. So, and also like what we are doing right now is like we did the, we are doing the field tests in, in the public campus in University of Nottingham. So like we arranged like the courtyards, the weather station, and there are some trees and the hot wells inside the, inside the rooms. So um, we did this, we, we did the field test and we, we did the, um, the simulation in, in CFD. Uh, so to to uh, enhance the indoor uh, comfort level and also achieve a better energy efficiency, uh, we develop a um, framework which use uh, using computer vision and deep learning to actually estimate the heat emission in the indoor space. So because uh, as you know, when people there are different uh, uh, when the people are doing different activities or you know there are different numbers of people in the space or you know uh uh when different numbers of equipments are using and also different types of uh, equipment are using the heat emission in the indoor space are different so once we get the, the real-time information from indoor space we input it into big, uh, building and management systems to achieve um demand driven control for uh, heat, uh heating uh, cooling and ventilation to the space. So uh, this can uh, both, you know, uh, achieve a better energy efficiency and also make a, a comfortable indoor space for occupants. Uh, uh, and also the real-time profile of the, is the real-time schedule of occupancy equipment can be fit into the building energy simulation software to, uh, to perform a dynamic analysis uh, for the building energy performance. So as you can see, uh, this is uh, this is the result like uh, compare compare the typical profile, which is like usually fixed, you know, like static uh, schedule, compared with the deep learning based profile. As you can see, the cooling demands uh, drop, and uh, but uh, but at the same time. Uh, the heating demands are increased because you want to provide a more comfortable, comfortable indoor space. So you provide more heating in the uh, winter, especially in UK. So, but, it, but uh, as you can see, TMZ and PD are the index to assess the in, uh, indoor comfort level. But as you can see, for PLE, it increased to zero because zero is the best, um, uh, the most comfort, comfortable level in the space. And also for PDD, it, uh, the, it decreased. From like around 30, uh, 25% to 5%. So it's a big increase uh, of the uh, uh, improve, improvement of the indoor cover level. Uh, so, uh, apart from uh, occupancy and equipment detection, uh, we also use uh, computer vision, which still on, is still under development, to uh, detect like lighting, uh, window opening and the uh, closing level, and also like for fire detection for safety. And then so uh, using this, computer vision can achieve like a rapid response. So uh, uh, to the input space. And, but there's a limited uh, research about actually combine computer vision application to the building management system. <coughs> so so uh, this is the future chain of, um, using company vision in the indoor space. Okay, yeah, uh, Sony already touched on the, the building information modeling system. That's basically a platform. All of these kind of digital tools and all of the uh, stakeholders, partners can contribute their model, their information onto this uh, unified platform. So we can think about the assistant design and think about the whole design uh, as an ecosystem. And also, uh, based on the building information modeling system, uh, recently, last uh, few years, we even uh, start to create uh, the same called the uh, city information modeling system and try to integrate uh, all of the information as a web platform, then uh, see what's the, uh, uh, what's the uh, link between each other. Uh, and uh, how mentioned about uh, his project uh, before, as I mentioned, we work close with the Chartered Institute for the uh, SIPs. 
uh, a lot of this work will inform the uh, guidance and the technical uh, guide. Uh, so the top two now is uh, basically linked with the house work. We will we just approve SMR01, which is about how the state uh, CFD modeling consider the trees, vegetations, and the hard landscape, which uh, never ever have a guidance for the building environment sector. I think that's also linked with a lot of our colleagues here. If you have any uh, data or model you think maybe link this, we, we are very happy to put uh, more data and the uh, case study information into our guidance to let industrial consider more about uh, uh, natural environment uh, and link with the building environment design. And the, the purpose also uh, to create another OT01 guidance, uh, think about not just indoor thermal comfortable, also outdoor thermal comfortable, and how the indoor outdoor comfortable link with each other. And the rest of the guidance is existing guidance, but as Sean you mentioned, our project uh, due to currently we have a, a more like machine learning and uh, AI technology coming. So how to use these kind of tools? Uh, update the guidance and uh, inform designers, industrial, make their design better uh, based on a lot of uh, uh, AI tools prediction and uh, inform the system control in advance rather, rather than later to save energy and the carbon emission. Uh, some papers link with that research and uh, that's a summary of, of our a whole research team. Initially, we just focused on building itself and uh, single tools to consider uh, carbon and carbon calculation. Uh, but now we invite uh, inviting more digital technology to create a, a more comprehensive system uh, uh, concerned about the climate change. And to go beyond building, we really want a multidisciplinary uh, uh, collaboration, uh, link the uh, outdoor environment with the indoor environment. And also the last one, I did a, a support call to organize the master class, which address another issue. We try to create a beauty environment for thermal comfortable. Thermal comfortable is for human being. So all of the our design now also think about the uh, uh, we call human center. So how to bring end user into the design based on the uh, pre and the post evaluation. That's uh, another part of the research we we are doing and collect the data at the moment. And then put these kind of vector models into the uh, into the traditional design and the modeling. Okay, that's all of all, uh, our contact. And uh, hopefully we can build up more collaboration. And uh, any question. One question on the Slido about um, asking about you talk about implementing those measures that we talked about with them um, and, and how much energy savings do they produce as well as the kind of cooling and heating aspects. Well, oh, it actually depends on the location, the buildings, because it's very specific. Uh, because for some, especially it's, uh, in different countries, for example, in tropical countries, actually the cooling. The same is going to be like a huge, you know, but like for in UK, maybe you need more heating and yet it's that. So actually, uh, for in this case, we focus more on uh, human, you know, thermal comfort and then uh, just to avoid unnecessary waste in the cooling season and then also provide enough heating in the winter. But for example, in the hot, you know, uh, the country in the hot season, definitely going to decrease also cooling demands using this term. Yeah. yeah, so it really depends. Yeah, yeah. In, in general, like from your side, it depends location, depends on the project. But uh, technology-wise, we can not just technology, but it's two, two directions. We can think about the passive design first. I, I, I think one of the colleagues from Nigeria talked about the the, the, the project uh, passive design is based on the orientation and the, the, the building um, uh, building materials, building uh, structure element itself, then if we consider that first, uh, we can basically reduce uh, energy as much, reduce energy demand as much as we can without energy system. But of course, they cannot cover 100%. Then we use a small amount of the mechanical system, but mainly based on now we could renewable energy, such as a PV system, wind turbine system. So combine this model together, we technology-wise or engineering side, we can achieve zero carbon, zero energy. But 
think about that uh, sustainable technological, the economic side, maybe not worth to do that. So it's still a pathway we need to trade off. But by the end of 2050, maybe we can totally address this issue and change zero energy, zero carbon building.